Are you pregnant and GBS positive? Let's explain what that means and how that affects your labor. So have you heard yet about group beta strep? So let's explain what that is. So group beta strep is a bacteria that some women have in their vagina. They're just what we call colonized with it. So it means that she doesn't have an infection, it's just there. It's not sexually transmitted, it just comes from the environment. And that can vary from one pregnancy to the next. But the problem is that if she goes into labor with group beta strep in the vagina, it can be transmitted to the newborn. So even though mom doesn't have an infection, if the baby picks up group beta strep, it can cause an infection in the baby and can even lead to a serious situation where the newborn has sepsis. And so to prevent that, the way that we handle this is that during the pregnancy, about 35, 36 weeks, when you're at your prenatal visit, your provider will do a culture of the vaginal and rectal area. And if it comes back positive, then we give mom the antibiotics in labor to prevent it from being transmitted to the baby. And at least four hours of antibiotics usually will be enough. And that usually translates to about two doses of antibiotics. Hi, I'm Susan White, Certified Nurse Midwife with Childbirth Education for the Christian Family, and I want you to be informed so you can feel empowered in birth. Please stay till the end, and I have a free resource to give you, and also please click like and subscribe if you're finding this helpful. Now, what if mom did not get the culture done? Then they're going to go by risk factors. So let's say if she were in um, having the water broke for at least 18 hours, if she's premature, if she gets a fever in labor. And then also if she's had a prior baby with a GBS infection, she definitely needs to be treated. Or if she had a urinary infection with group beta strep during the pregnancy. So all those would be reasons for her to get antibiotics. Now, if she gets the appropriate antibiotics, then they really don't have to do anything else with the newborn. But if she does not get the recommended doses, then they may have to do extra blood work on the baby and sometimes even start antibiotics if it seems like the baby might be getting sick. Okay, so it's really best if we can prevent that with antibiotics. Now, what if you are really hoping to not have IV fluids in labor? You will still probably need that saline line in your arm they can simply hook up the antibiotics and run those in intermittently. It's usually like every four hours. And then in between, they can unplug that and take that off. So this is definitely something that you can talk to your provider about, but that is the standard of care. Would you like to have a free copy of my resource should you have your labor induced? And also save a discount on my childbirth education classes. Just go to the link in the description.